Hey everyone, my name is Ben Weir and I'm an applications expert here at EpiGrid. In this video, I'm going to show you what it looks like to use EpiGrid's hosted PDM on a daily basis, as well as the general interface and some useful features. I will start by checking out an assembly, opening it in SolidWorks, making some changes, saving it and finally checking it back in. After that, I will show you some of the different tabs and interface features that make PDM intuitive and efficient. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. Before I go any further, I'm going to quickly run two internet speed tests, one from my home in New York and one in our data center in Atlanta, Georgia. The one on the top is the one at my home and the one below is the one in the data center. Bearing in mind, I live 750 miles away from the data center. The idea of this is to give you a reference point using my internet speed. The first thing I'm going to do is connect to the VPN using my credentials and then connect to the PDM vault from within the file explorer interface. This overall process typically takes no more than 10 to 15 seconds. Once I've logged in, it's automatically going to navigate into the vault. As you can see, it looks very similar to navigating file explorer on your local computer. I'm going to open up this assembly, making sure I've checked it out. This caches a copy to your local drive, which is where any changes you make are saved. Once I've opened this assembly, I'm going to open up one of the parts in a new window. However, only the top level assembly is checked out, so I'll ensure that I've now checked out this part as well. I can do this from the PDM icon on the right hand side toolbar within the SolarWorks interface. I'm going to make a few changes to this part which I fast forwarded. One thing to note is, while I have fast forwarded this part, I have not fast forwarded the checking in and out of files. Once I've made these changes, I'm going to save the part file and then check it back in. Again, I can do this from the PDM icon on the right hand side. Once I've done this and I've made sure the part is checked back in, I'm going to close this file. The changes I've just made should have now updated in the top level assembly. Next, I will save the assembly and then check it back in. This updated file, which was cached on your local drive, is now a new version in PDM. This means you can roll back to previous versions if needs be. Depending on the size of the file and your internet speed, it may take longer to check back in. Once we've finished checking the assembly file back in, we can close it down. I'm now going to show you some of the cool features within the PDM interface, which are what make it so great. But first, let me get the latest version of the assembly from the vault. The time it takes to do this depends on the size of the files and also your internet speed. Another thing to note is that every time I select or deselect a file, I'm actually interacting with the data in the data center. Once this is done, I'm going to flick through some of the different tabs available. You have the bill of materials, which shows all of the parts within the assembly file which I selected. To look at some of the other tabs, let's select a different file. I'll sort by most recently modified and select the finger cuff which I made changes to earlier. The preview tag gives you a live and interactive viewing experience without even opening the part file. You have the data card with any relevant information, the version history of the part, the bill of materials, what the file contains, and where the current file is used. I hope this has given you a better idea of what daily use of PDM can look like on a hosted solution from EpiGrid. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can do this from our website. Thank you again for watching.